The other thing that that we have to take a look at is in terms of what's going to affect bond yields and mortgage interest rates are not just the Fed funds rate and the the impact of inflation on those bonds, but also the Fed's balance sheet, simply supply and demand. So the Fed can do something called quantitative tightening or quantitative easing, where they buy bonds and they buy mortgage-backed securities and they hold them on their balance sheet. And when they do that, they're basically taking these bonds off of the market. So they're reducing the supply of those bonds. And when you reduce the supply, then demand goes up and prices go up limited supply, more demand, prices go up. And the way uh, bonds and mortgage-backed securities or mortgage interest rates work is they the yields go in the opposite direction of the price. So as bond prices go up, yields come down. So when they buy the securities and put on their balance sheet, basically the Fed is buying these out of the market. They're taking them off the table. They're driving interest rates down. And that they did this, uh, they've done this during the Great Recession of 2008, after 2008. They did it again massively in COVID. And if you'll remember, interest rates went down to the twos and threes. And that was primarily driven by the Fed buying, is, is really the biggest buyer of the bond market in the world and just gobbling up from, from basically $4 trillion on their balance sheet to $8.5 trillion. In 2022, what they started to do is selling those bonds back off of their balance sheet. So they would sell the bonds off their balance sheet because they can't hold them forever. They have to sell them. So they essentially started flooding the market with bonds, 10-year bonds, treasury notes, mortgage-backed securities. And by flooding the market, then there's an oversupply of bonds for the number of buyers. And so therefore the price comes down because you have a, a bevy of buyers wanting, wanting to buy, but there's so much to buy, there's much more supply. So prices come down and when prices come down, yields or rates go up. And that's one of the reasons why mortgage interest rates and the 10-year yield has been so stubborn for the last couple of years because they've been clearing their balance sheet. Moving on now, you can take a look here at the averages of where they were um, when you look at the total securities held on their balance sheet versus the gross domestic product and as a percentage. And you can see the average range in 2014 to 2018 was about 22% uh, what they held in the balance sheet versus our GDP. Well, as our GDP continues to grow, of course, the debt is, that they're holding does as well. And, and and now, but you could see that the percentage is like 33%. So that's a 50% higher uh, number than what they were comfortable with pre-COVID. But here's where we stand right now as of January, 2024. They have been selling those securities off the balance sheet. You can see from 8.4 trillion down to 7.1 trillion. So the percentage has come down and where we expect the GDP to come in January, it's starting to normalize. And if you can continue to extrapolate this on down, um, they will continue to sell off their balance sheet, but one of the big things they're probably going to do is slow that down. They've signaled that they are they're going to do that at some point. In addition to that, you're gonna you've got an, uh, an election year, and the powers that be are going to want to see lower interest rates. They're going to want to see some slowing down of the market flooding of the Fed, and you can see that with by by slowing down the sale because they were very aggressive here in the last year and a half, the percentages start to normalize here by, interestingly enough, election time, we get back to the number that they were comfortable with in the mid 2000s. You can see right there, we think that you're going to see a, a pretty substantial impact in the mortgage market itself as a result of that.